We just got done taking a look at the building of an old style of canoe with Gary Hodgson, and here we're at Placid Boat Works. We're here with Charlie Wilson and Joe Moore. Thank you for joining us, guys. Thanks, Thanks for joining us on the trails. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Why don't you guys tell us a little bit about the types of canoes that you guys build here? Well, we build primarily modern recreations of the classic Adirondack pack canoe. Paddler sits just off the bottom, has foot pegs, back band, and uses a kayak paddle. All our all our boats have the same laminate. It's a carbon Kevlar hybrid. Uh, basically, two layers of carbon on the outside, three layers of Kevlar on the inside. And the first one, I, I know our, our camera person back there has one of your canoes, and it's the, uh, it's the Spitfire, I believe. Yes, indeed. Slowest individual boat we've ever made. <laughs> um, the no, the fastest. It is absolutely the fastest. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have paddled that canoe. But um, that was the David Yost design. He's been interested in pack canoes for several years. And when, when Joe and I started this company, we called David up. He said, all right, I'll, I'll design a pack canoe for you. Joe, what are the dimensions of the Rapid Fire and the Spitfire? Well, the Rapid Fire, which the, the mold for the Rapid Fire is right here, is 15 feet long overall. It is uh, 27 and a half inches at the max beam and 24 inches at the water line. And how much does it weigh? It weighs about 28 to 29 pounds, depending on the options you get in it. Okay. And the Spitfire? Spitfire is 12 feet, and it's the same width, 27 and a half inches. Uh, it's more of the all-around Adirondack boat. It's great for pond hopping. It's short, easy to get through the woods, uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, get around the curvy trails mm -hmm. easily, and, and it's a little bit lighter. It goes about 22 to 23 pounds, depending on how it's, uh, which, which seat option you choose. And you're going to show us how these are how these uh, boats are built. We are. Okay, let's take a look. This is fabric, but what what is this? This is carbon fiber. Okay. Generic is generic name is graphite. It's, uh, it's uh, actually a rayon that's been carbonized, and it just rolls out as if it were potato sacking. Now the reason we use two different materials in the building of our boats is because. Carbon is a very stiff material, almost tends to be brittle, mm -hmm. but it gives you great stiffness for lightweight. Kevlar, on the other hand, tends to be, it's a very high tensile strength material, which means it'll bend a long way before it breaks. Okay. However, if you don't use enough Kevlar when you build a boat, it tends to be what we call oil can, which means as you paddle hard, the, the boat will flex and you okay. lose energy. You get a combination of the two materials, though, and you get the, the best qualities of both materials. You get the stiffness of the carbon. And the uh, and the uh, forgiveness of the uh, of the Kevlar. Of the Kevlar, Kevlar. Exactly. Okay. What's the next step now? Well, what we've done, we've cut the first layer of fabric, okay. the first carbon layer that goes in the boat. We've cut it with our pattern, uh, cut it out of a roll of fabric, and uh, we're now going to lay it in the boat. Okay. Let's see that done. And it's pretty simple to find the center. We have marks on the mold, and okay. uh, I'm on center now, and these guys both tension their ends. This is where our process begins to differ from standard canoe building because we're putting this layer in dry and we won't be resonating it. The this, old, method, uh, old method is you use a brush or a roller or a, a squeegee and you put the resin on wet and you force it through the fabric and everybody's wearing respirators and the air stinks and uh, this method you can see is very clean. We're not wearing respirators. We don't need to. We're not using any wet resin or active resin. Uh, we've cut our emissions with this process by 90%. Huh. Which is good for the Adirondacks and, and good for us. But because we use a, a translucent outer gel coat, this is, this is the cosmetic outer layer. It's very critical that we get the fabric in straight uh, without wrinkles. Okay. There will be 30 pieces of fabric in this hull when we're ready to, to resonate it. Everything goes in dry and we have to stick it in place with what amounts to uh, industrial hairspray. So we just put a, a light little tack of that down, find the center of the boat again, and here goes our center section. Well, we've started out with a full carbon blanket, okay. and now we're going to reinforce the water line with a second, okay. with a complete layer of carbon down in, in the bottom of the boat. That stiffens the boat significantly. 
uh, makes it a good deal stronger and uh, it's very important that the boat not flex um, in the water because that would scrub off speed and make the boat less efficient. And it, at my age, you want as efficient a boat as you can get. Yes, you do. After we've put in two layers of carbon, a full blanket and then a carbon bottom to stiffen the boat, mm -hmm. now we're going to put in a Kevlar bottom and then a couple of diamonds and a full Kevlar inner blanket. Okay. Uh, and the Kevlar, consequently, is our tens tensile strength layer. It reinforces the carbon. When you hit a, an obstruction, a rock, mm -hmm. or what happens mostly is people back into their garage with a, with a <laughs> boat on top of the car, um, the carbon resists deflection. But if you keep driving into your garage, the carbon eventually starts to give way. And at that point, the Kevlar, being on the inside, comes under tension and reinforces the carbon. Okay. And now we're putting in a second bias diamond. This is a carbon one, which gives us a much stiffer Little cockpit. Long, long in the back. Okay. You'll notice once again we're using a pattern uh, to more efficiently cut the Kevlar. Mm -hmm. And as we, as we cut the main body, and this is a double inner layer, it's nine and a half ounce Kevlar, um, we'll cut the quarters for the next boat. And then we have these large pieces of scrap. And we utilize them as well, don't we? Now this is the final layer that goes in the boat. And this is a unique, a unique fabric. This is actually a double layer of Kevlar. Hmm. The vacuum puts so much pressure on the laminate that we had to add uh, a second layer of Kevlar to the boats to maintain proper thickness. Because while much of your stiffness comes from the carbon, some comes from the thickness of the resin. And in this one, don't I find the center here. Yeah. I'm down, guys. So this double layer saves us a double lay in. It goes in a little nicer, um, and we, we maintain the thickness we need to make the boat as stiff as it should be. Because what we're doing thick. now uh, is putting in a release layer called peel ply. When we actually resonate the boat, that will occur in just a very few minutes, uh, and it'll resonate very quickly but you have to be able to get the bag off, back off the boat. So the peel ply goes down over the fabric, um, and it will be physically peeled off the inside of the boat. Right? And what we're doing now, after we've put in all the fabric, all 30 pieces that make a boat, and uh, the peel ply that gives us that smooth matte inner finish, now we're dropping the silicon bag over the whole combination. Now what we're doing here, this is a, we call this a plenum. Um, and this is just a, a tooling device that helps us make boats more efficiently. There are two gaskets here, the inner one seals on the, on the uh, silicon bag, the outer one seals on the mold's flange. And that provides us with a vacuum all the way around the perimeter of the boat. Okay. Okay, guys, this is the final stage. What's happening now? Well, what we have here, the plenum is over the bag, and we're ready to, we've clamped the plenum in place, compressed the gaskets, and we're ready to pull the bag down to actually put the vacuum on the, on the 30 pieces in the laminate. So the vacuum, the air is being sucked out of here through this, and then the material that the resin you're putting in is coming in through that hose and then filling it all the way through. That's yes. it. Okay. Now we're ready to infuse a boat. And uh, we have a vacuum all the way around the perimeter, a nice stable vacuum at about uh, 29 inches of mercury, which is a lot here in Lake Placid because we're at 2,000 feet in the air. Uh, and we simply, we've let the uh, styrene cook off the resin. And here we, we go. go. Interesting. And you see it, it, uh, Marches right down the tube in the center of the bag and then starts up the side. Now what we try to do here is keep air from getting in this tube and down into the boat. Wouldn't make any real difference other than cosmetic. So Joe's going to clamp this a couple of times as, as the tube drains down.